So what I want to talk about today, uh, task management and time boxing within the Microsoft ecosystem. Um, but first of all, who am I? Um, on the business side, I'm a managing partner at 4PS in Germany. Um, we create a cloud-based ERP system for the construction industry. On the community, community side, I'm an MVP for Azure and business applications, a regional director and a Docker captain. And if you like what you're seeing today, um, you can follow my socials, uh, reach out to me, happy to have any kind of discussion, find my blog um, or find my, find my podcast. And um, I'm also married with two kids. But now, uh, yeah, let's let's jump into the, the actual topic, which is task management. And I first want to share with you why I did what I did and what I what I'll share with you. Um, I'm really a big fan of doing task management in the Microsoft ecosystem. So mainly planner and to do that works really well for me to do for my own stuff. Um, planner for things that we do as a company, as a team, um, just in one on ones or whatever. It, it just helps me to stay organized. I, I'm really afraid of forgetting something, um, bad memory. But once I started using the, the task management stuff, I was sure that, yeah, I, I would basically never lose a task again. And that's uh, for my personal ease of mind, that's that's really important. But what's less good actually is the integration with calendar and with time boxing. So uh, for to do, it's OK, but you have to do it manually. There is in Outlook this um, this view where you can drag and drop your tasks. but not great in my opinion. And for Planner, there actually is no integration at all. So um, yeah, I, I decided that if I want to do time boxing, if I want to have my tasks in my calendar, I needed to do something um, for that on my own. But again, the question is why? Why would I even do the calendar integration and the time boxing? And for me, it's basically two issues that I had. One was when to do what? Um, and for that, what I personally do is I plan my week in advance, typically Friday afternoon, sometimes even on the weekend. I try to roughly map out what things I want to do on which day. And then I hit um, the, the flow that I will show you in a second with a manual trigger. And that puts calendar entries in my week for the different tasks, again, in planner and in to-do that I might have so that I can then plan them. But of course, it's a plan. So what that means is that basically somewhere during Monday, it, it uh, goes off the rails. So I, um, am, I will be changing my, my plan, the tasks, the assignments during the week. And for that, I also have um, as an automated trigger running the same flow, but basically not for the full week, but just for the day ahead so that it updates the tasks that I have um, in my agenda for the next day. Um, the other thing that it solves for, solves for me is how much time I spend on which task, because before doing this, before putting my tasks in my calendar, I typically had two problems. Either I planned way too many tasks, so I had basically, I don't know, maybe two hours left uh, open on the day, and I planned like five tasks. Surprise, after the third uh, task, the two hours were already gone, and I, I, I always couldn't finish the things that I had planned. And then sometimes I had basically the opposite thing where I had a full day left open. I decided I'll do those three very important tasks. Started with the first one um, enthusiastic because I had all that time. And then I spent like six hours on the first task. And again, I, I couldn't finish anything. So I wanted to time box, which means and that I'm sure I have an idea. I want to spend two hours on this task, one hour on that task, and then maybe four hours on that one. So, so I have an idea when I'm running out of time or how much time I will need for, for other things. So that is basically the reason why I did um, what I did. And I want, now want to show you what it looks like in the end. Of course, this is a, a demo calendar, but it, it shows basically what happens after the automated flow has run. So this would be me having planned a couple of to-dos, a couple of planner tasks for the full week. It would put them in the calendar, as you can see, always at six o'clock, because I never ever would plan a, a regular meeting at six o'clock. So that means that if I have a meeting there, I know this is coming from um, from my flow that has put it there. You can also see it has that little icon um, in the beginning that also is a sign for me. Yes, this is actually planned. And if you're a Outlook uh, user, you will recognize that by the by the coloring and uh, the transparent coloring that those to do's don't block time in my calendar. So that means that if colleagues want to spend time with me, someone wants to um, take a look at my calendar. Those to do's typically don't block the time. They are just my reminder that I want to do something there. But if someone else wants a, uh, a meeting or grab some time, it, it doesn't show up as blocked in that area. So what I then do when I have that, I, I basically go in and move the tasks and the to do's into the days and give them the time span that I want to have so that I end up with something like this. Maybe you've noticed if I go back here, 
I have nothing planned on Friday, but for on Thursday, where, where this workshop happens. So you can see, of course, I'm also dragging things along days now that I see what the actual plan will look like. But that gives me an idea of um, whether the things that I have planned, that the things that I have uh, due during that week will actually have a chance of happening. And I, I have enough time to, to do that. So that's basically the idea. Now, how is it built in, in Automate? The basic idea is that I take a look at the calendar and I give as a parameter to the flow, and we will see that in a second, the start and the end date and the flag whether I want to clean up everything because maybe I messed up my task planning. I want to start from scratch again. So I also have a flag that would basically first remove all the task entries that I have for that week in the calendar, of course. The tasks themselves would stay, but just the calendar entries um, would be removed if that cleanup um, flag is, is positive. And then I basically iterate over all my planner tasks, um, over all my to dos. And then um, if the calendar entry doesn't yet exist for that date, it's it's created. And that's more or less all there is. There are a couple of little wrinkles. I'll, I'll show you that when we go through the actual flow. Now, this is all handled in the manual flow. So that's basically what I trigger manually to create everything for a full week. But I also have an outer a scheduled flow that runs every day, calls the inner flow. Um, I do it at 6 p.m. for the next day because hopefully I'm done working at that time. And it just calls the inner flow, creates the tasks for the next day and makes sure that my task list and my calendar are in sync again. And then in the morning when I start working, I can see, oh, there's actually an entry six o'clock in the morning. That means that something has been added by me or someone else assigned me a task. And now I need to figure out whether I can um, fit that in my day or not. So that's basically and the whole idea why I did it, how I did it. Now let's take a look at the actual flow. First, the uh, probably less interesting one, which is the outer flow. That one is easy. It just has a, a recurrence every day at six o'clock, every workday or every day. I'm not even sure. A start date, an end date, and then it runs my manual flow with those two parameters. And you can see here, I don't delete um, the existing calendar entries by default because typically there is nothing anyway when I run it manually. And then we have the more interesting part, which is the inner flow. There you can see that I'm first grabbing the default calendar ID by making a call to me calendar in the graph API. Because if I have multiple calendars, I, I can't figure out which one to put um, the tasks into. So I'm just getting the default one, storing that. Then I'm getting all events with a specific cat category. That's also um, something I did to figure out, is this a task um, calendar entry or is this a regular calendar entry? It has a specific category. And by that, I can basically get all the events with that ID. And if we take a closer look here, also with a filter query, um, taking the start date time and the end date time into account and taking a look at, to, at the right category to find out which ones it should get. And then I'm checking whether the calendar events should be deleted. And that's the other one that I mentioned before. If yes, then I just go through all events with that category and delete them. And if no, then we will remember the subjects. And I'll show you in a second why that why that is the case. And then we have two things that are happening in parallel. One is to go through all the to-dos. The other one is to go through all the planner tasks. Let's take the to-do side because that's actually <laughs> the more complex ones because with Planner, I just make one request, I get all tasks. And on a to-do side, I have to go through all my lists and collect the tasks from there. So that, that makes it a bit more interesting. Here, I'm taking all the lists. Then I'm iterating over all the lists. And then I can take a look at the list to get my actual to-dos. So on Planner, that's just one step. On to-do, that's, that's actually two steps. So now we are iterating over all the tasks. First of all, I'm checking whether the due date is set because only if I have a due date, then I can put it into my calendar. I need to figure out whether the event exists or not yet. That's why in the beginning, we start all the subjects of the different tasks because if it has already been created through the weekly run or for whatever reason, and now my daily task kicks in, I don't want to create duplicates. So I'm basically remembering what is already there as a task. And then um, if, it's, if it's not already created, then I'll create it. But if it's already there, then this if condition will fail. And also for um, tasks that already have been completed, of course, I'll skip those as well. So 
if something of this fails, then I'll do nothing. If yes, then I had to do a time zone conversion, something that I also found out the hard way that this happens because then you sometimes go in a different day and that's obviously not what I wanted. I'll check whether I have the due date in the in the requested range. If not, then I'll also do nothing. If it is in the requested range, then I'll just create a calendar event. Here you can see the calendar ID of the default calendar that I've used. We have the subject here, and this is where I put the little icon in the front of the subject. We have the start date and the end date. And in the advanced options, you can also see here that I'm creating a URL for the actual task. So if I open the calendar entry, I also have a direct link into my task planner or to-do so that I can immediately find out more about the, about the actual task. And then the last one that's maybe a bit interesting is that there is no option to set a category on the, on the uh, calendar entry itself. So after it has been created and the ID of the um, event has been returned, I need to go back in here and say that it is actually of the task category. So that's, that's the only way that I found how I can set a category for a calendar entry. And that's basically it. In the end, maybe also a little wrinkle that's interesting because it was a, I'm using it as a child flow. I have to respond to a power app in the end. That's the only way how I could make it work on the schedule side, but then it would always fail on the manual side. So I put it on a scope here and in the end, I just did something that never fails, which is setting a calendar, the calendar ID variable doesn't make sense, but it just is something to do. So on the manual side, it works and on the automated side, it works as well. Okay, last thing I wanted to show you is if I go back out here. So here we go. That's the interesting thing. I found out the scheduled task is basically done in 33 seconds, as you can see here. But if we take a look at the same thing in the manual task, then you can see that the manual tasks are slightly slower because it takes a bit longer for the schedule to happen. But sometimes it also appears as if the schedule thing would be longer. So there seems to be some, some timing difference here. Okay, that was it from my side. I hope it gave you an idea of yeah why I did this, how I did this. And um, if you're interested, if you want to chat about it, have feedback, again, please reach out. I'd be more than happy to have a discussion with you. Tobias, awesome. I mean, holy cow, right? Holy <laughs> cow. We got some awesome stuff here today.